Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Kansas City Jazz Pianist Jackie Myers of The Swing Set on her newest 2019 CD, The State of the City. It's a great story. She has been here in Kansas City for some time after being on the scene in Austin, Texas, and it's been quite a ride. On this new release with her instrumental jazz quartet full of groove and swing, it's for jazz lovers out there everywhere. She delivers some quality music alongside musicians, Sam Copeland, Jim Lauer, and the great Mike Herrera. The CD has quality artwork by Georgia Parker, and we talk about all of this. So please have a listen. I had a great time listening to this album, and I know I'm biased, and I know I've been in The Green Lady, but I can totally feel The Green Lady vibe with this, with this latest CD. Cool. Yeah, it just, it just has a great, a great feeling to it. So my, my first question to you is this. I guess before we get to this album, you know, the last time we spoke about a year ago, you were relatively new to the Kansas City scene, and now you're more established. How do you feel now? I mean, you got an album, you're a regular at the Green Lady, you're really immersed in this Kansas City scene. How do you feel about what's going on with you in Kansas City right now? Um, I mean, playing jazz in Kansas City is, for me, if you'd have told me I could have done this five years ago, I might not have believed you. Other people dream of, like, going to New York or L.A., but I sort of always had my eye on Kansas City. I think the scene is amazing, and it, it's still an honor every single time I play the Green Lady. And every time I get to play alongside the great players that the scene offers. The ironic metaphor within the title of this album, which is the state of the city, and just based on the colors that come out of it, the sound of this album, it sounds like the state of the city is good. So talk to me about what this title means and kind of what your vision for this album was. You know, the state of the city is, is basically a play on the fact that Kansas City is one of the only ones that's straddles two states. But of course, there's a little bit more to it than that. Within Kansas City itself, there's this feeling that it's overlooked a little bit. Like people don't know what's going on here. And so one of the reasons I entitled it that was to plainly say, there's something going on here. Because the meaning of that title would say, you know, what is the state? It, it implies a question. Well, what is that state of this city? I guess my answer is there's a lot more going on here than might first meet the eye. Absolutely, I agree. I, I actually was just going through an interview that I did with Matt Cain, the drummer from Hannibal, who moved on to New York, and he spent some time here. And he was talking about his last album and how he constructed it, and how it's, it's a team effort from the art to the players to the producer to the mixers. So you have Georgia Parker doing the art. You have musicians Sam Copeland, Jim Lauer, and Mike Carrera on this. How do you feel about this as a collective? Do you feel like that's what this was. Everybody came together and produced this quality product. What's your feeling? I mean, yeah, I couldn't have been luckier in terms of personnel. I was actually thinking about that this morning and in terms of what that what it means being a Kansas City album. You've got the rich tradition of big band in Kansas City with Count Basie. And then on drums, you have Jim Lauer, who's leading one of our more significant big bands. Um, you've got the rich tradition of Charlie Parker, and then Herrera's on saxophone, and he's pretty well-versed in that stuff, and you can hear the influence there. You've got a lot of young phenoms in Kansas City because of the conservatory. You'll see on the bandstand, I mean, I use, sometimes I use a bass player that's 20 years old because he can play just as well as anybody else. And you see that with Sam. I mean, he's not 20, but he can really, really play with a lot of precision. Um, and he's bringing that kind of post-bop era sound to things and you can hear that in his composition which he was so nice to let me use that last tune on the album is called modal logic and he wrote that and for the rest of the team that that a lot of them are actually from my roots which is austin which is where i started out and the mixing and mastering was done there and the artist is from there too so i didn't forget any of those people or what they do. And actually, some of them still stop by Kansas City on their tours and they stay with me. So Georgia happened to be staying with me. And I needed art for the album. And she's a wonderful visual artist, too. So I still kind of relish in that community as well as this one. So the whole aim of the swing set is the groove, swing, it's for jazz lovers everywhere. So my question to you is this, how much fun is it to play this music? It's a lot of fun. I mean, it definitely depends on the song. Like, Isolation is more of an emotional ballad, but even there you're digging in. 
For me, that's a lot of fun to be expressive on my instrument. The most fun tunes for me to play on here are Earnestly Melting. And actually, that's named after Ernest Melton in the yeah. Kansas City jazz scene. I loved his last album. I didn't even know him when I named that song, but I had listened to the album. And I it was just in my head for like a week. I was inspired, so I named the song after him, which was like really creepy on the bandstand a couple of weeks ago because we, we worked in the same band. I presented him with the song and he like didn't know me. And I was like, can you play the song that's named after you? And he's like, I guess. <laughs> um, but anyway, that one's really fun to play. So is Song for Lydia. I'm going to try to make a lot of albums and this will certainly not be my last, but I feel like I had a decent at bat here. I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of the people that worked with me on it. I really hope people enjoy it. You know, the one thing that's very evident about the way you play is there's a lot of soul that comes out of it. There's a lot of, you know, kind of the, an incarnation of this new Kansas City sound, which, you know, if you go way back, there's a lot of blues that's in it. There's a lot of swing. There's a lot of that. So my question to you is this. You know, you've obviously had this in you for your whole life as a musician. And, and as evidenced either by a musician or by a person you grow over time, what kind of growth have you done in Kansas City that's added to this? Uh, music feeling that you have on stage. What has Kansas City added to the groove, to the swing, to the soul of what you bring to your music? Well, I don't know if I can really, like, relay accurately the changes that have gone on with my playing in a year. I would leave that to the listener, let them listen to the last one and this one. But I will say um, one thing that's really changed for me is I feel somewhat embraced here. I've, I've, given, I've been given some opportunities I study with several people in town, one of which is Roger Wilder and Ken Lovern. And, you know, before I came to Kansas City, I would have told you I knew how to swing. And then I made friends with Stan. <laughs> and and um, Stan Kessler and I, we're still good buddies. We played chess together. But we were playing one day, and he was just like, what are you doing? You know, and, and there's, this, there's just a different – I didn't know – I mean, I thought I knew how to swing, but there are some intricacies of that. And I had a lot to learn. And it was really good for me to come here. And instead of people being like, that's not quite what we're looking for, don't come back, it was, cool, we see what you got. Okay, look at this. You know, it's very, like, welcoming, and um, I see what you're doing, look what I'm doing, maybe we can work together kind of attitude. When does the album officially come out? That's a really good question for my publicist, and I'm purposely just not in charge of things like that. That's cool. But it is available for sale at any of my live shows. Perfect. And then finally, what do you want the audience to get from this? Someone comes to your show, they dig it, they pick up the CD, they go home, they listen to it. What do you want them to get from what you've done? Oh, gosh, I just, I just hope they enjoy it. I mean, in whatever the way they want to perceive it. That's not really for me to... It's for me to give it to them and them to decide how they feel about it, you know? I like it. It's kind of like a show where I'm playing. I mean, I really care about them having a good time, and I hope that we're all collaborating and having a good time together. The same thing goes into making a CD. I have a great time making it. I hope that they get the same feeling, or at least a little bit of that feeling when they're listening to it. Right on. That's great. Jackie, thank you for the new music. Thank you for what you're doing for Kansas City. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Austin, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Jackie for the new music and for what she's doing for Kansas City. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.